everybody uh, understands English, uh, just like everybody uh, experiences anxiety one way or another. There's, you asked earlier who um, faces anxiety, uh, so everybody does. It's the most natural of uh, phenomenon. I was, but we're, I'll talk more later, uh, and now I'll invite you all to get up and uh, make some space for yourself. So you can spread around. Um, and nothing complicated, but you do want to have com comfortable, comfortable space. Uh, we're just going to take a moment to uh, just feel our feet on the ground, uh, about shoulders length. Uh, just really sense the way your feet, even though you're wearing shoes, um, meet the ground. And just take a moment to relax your knees, relax your knees, and just take a breath which you do anyway. Uh, no effort, yeah? Just feel it for a moment. You can pump your knees a little bit, a little bit. Maybe relax your hands, warm up a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of chilly and rainy, but maybe stretch. Yeah, just, it's still early after all. Just mind your knees, they don't lock back up. Yeah, we have a tendency to lock them up. You want them to relax. Otherwise, it creates pressure on the lower back and we want to avoid that. So, now, again, with breathing, we're go I'm going to invite you to uh, bend forward, nice and slow. And you're going to stay down there. Knees bent. Don't stress it. Yeah, as far as comfortable. Notice or make sure all the weight is on the legs and the feet, not on the hands. Let your head drop. And just breathe. <sighs> Take another moment. You can really let your head down. You don't need to hold it. It's connected. And when you're coming up, do it very, very slowly. Even slower than that. So you don't get uh, Yeah, dizzy. Exactly. And stay uh, mindful of the feet, still connected to the ground. And now we're going to stretch back to do the opposite uh, don't stop breathing, yeah, you want to keep breathing throughout, and we're going to go back down. Sense the support of the ground, yeah, the floor is giving you support through your feet, through your legs, the building is holding the floor, the ground is holding the building, the earth is down there too, yeah? So, we just breathe. Yeah, it's like reversing the flow a little bit of being upright all day. And again, nice and slow, we're gonna come up. Keep your knees loose. A nice breath and we'll do the opposite <coughs> direction going all the way as far as comfortable if you bend your knees a little more it gets easier yeah one more <laughs> let's see how are you doing yes no maybe so let's do one more come on one more, one more. <sighs> could stay down here for as long as you like, really. There's no such thing as too much with this one. And just really relax your head, feel your legs. Allow your breath to just happen.
And nice and slow, you can come up. Good, and now we're just gonna take a moment to sense what's going on at this moment, in this room, in your body. Don't overthink it, just feel it. And now the improvisation <coughs> comes in and I'm gonna invite you to just start walking around the room. Stay with the feeling you sensed right now after doing this exercise. Just walk around. And just notice, how does it feel to stay with yourself, but also to connect to what's going on outside of us? There are people, sounds, smells. If you sense uneasiness or an uncomfortable feeling, that's okay too. Just be with it. It doesn't always have to be perfect. And now I'll invite you to stop where you are. And reconnect, yeah, let your knees loose. Feel the feet on the ground, reconnect to that same place you found or sensed when we first did the exercise. Come back to your breathing. You can look around, maybe meet some eyes if you feel like it. If not, it's also okay. <sighs> and I'll invite you to return to your seats. And my invitation to you is to um, stay with it a little bit, or as long as it stays, yeah? That sense uh, or that uh, other dimension of being here, yeah? Not just return straight back to your head, okay, there's a talk now, let's get back to, yeah? No, it's also here. Yeah, what you feel, what you breathe, what you sense is just as important or equal to what's going on in your head. Okay, so thank you for Toda uh, <laughs> um, I'm Yaniv and I'm a psychotherapist. And uh, I'll just say uh, what we just did was a simple exercise um, for self connection. And um, we used two basic techniques from body psychotherapy, breathing and grounding. Uh, breathing, really, we just brought the attention to it to allow more space for it without tension, without uh, effort, without trying to change it. Oh, I'm not breathing enough. Oh, this is too tight. Yeah, just <coughs> bringing your attention to it is enough. And then the grounding was about feeling the feet on the ground, connecting to the ground, connecting to our bodies and connecting to reality, the reality of being in this room right now. Um, so, my nekudat um, motza, or the place I come from, uh, is that what goes on in our heads also goes on in our bodies, and what happens in our bodies happens in our heads, and so it's not enough to just talk. Uh, you have to work with the whole person, and that includes the body. Uh, and when I work with people 
struggling with anxiety at the clinic um, and it can be exam anxiety or performance anxiety or uh, social anxiety or existential anxiety even, <coughs> um, I found again and again that uh, strengthening and reconnecting to ourself, strengthening that, that self-connection really helps alleviate anxiety. Um, but what is self-connection anyway, yeah? Uh, what does it mean? And it, it means different things to different people. Um, but the most basic uh, idea is that uh, it connects to um, the concept of the int intrapersonal. Okay, in English, by Ivrit is chibur atzmi, or yeah, intrapersonal. Uh, and really has to do with everything that goes on in our minds, in the nefesh, uh, and in the atzmi, in the self. Um, and I add in our bodies as well, because it's one and the same. Um, and so the more we strengthen that connection, the less anxious we are. Um, and when that, these type of exercises, which I also do at the clinic, but you can also do, you know, you could do it at home, you could do it uh, even at work, you just take five minutes, you get, off, you get up from the desk or wherever you are, uh, or in the studio, um, and you, or if there are people and you need a moment, sometimes I just go to the bathroom <laughs> to breathe. Yeah, and I take that, that two minutes uh, to feel my feet on the ground, I bend forward, I breathe, and it, it, it just reconnects me to myself, it brings it back down. Yeah, if I go up and you start overthinking and everything goes crazy, you go right back in. Um, and so uh, when you take those exercises uh, into a therapeutic process, it goes even deeper and then uh, it also allows for long-term changes uh, and better um, uh, like well-being. Um, so um, yeah, that's that. And I did want to say a little bit, I thought you were going to, but I'll, I'll say a little bit about anxiety in general. Um, like I said a little bit in the beginning that it's the most basic uh, natural phenomenon. We all have it, we're born with it, animals have it. Uh, I remember um, my son is now just over a year, but when he was like three, four months old, I would put a shirt over his head. And for those few moments that he was covered, anxiety kicked in right away panting <laughs> and his hands trying to figure out what's going on and restore harmony, yeah, because uh, there's a perceived threat. Uh, uh, and the, the soon, as soon as I pulled it down, uh, the body relaxed, the breathing res was restored. Um, and that's the natural cycle of anxiety, basically, yeah. Um, the problems begin when that cycle is, uh, is not complete and we get stuck with it. Yeah, uh, we're unable to relax back down and realize that the threat is no longer there or is not really there. Um, and that's when um, these type of exercises and there are, of course, other plenty of modalities and therapy approaches and medications and et cetera, et cetera. And they all have a value and for each person, um, this is my encouragement for anyone dealing with anything, not, not necessarily just anxiety, but to really uh, like to make it really, um, to find what works for you, what is right for me, um, and go with that. Okay, so, um, yes? Uh, of therapy, or, or uh, or to become, life. of life, life, of life, wow. <laughs> okay, so I'll, tell, I'll say a little You're bit about myself. I'm what? I'm a yoga teacher, so you came a No, no, I did. Uh, I was on a completely different course. Um, I was, uh, I studied journalism and political science. I was, I'm a writer. <laughs> Sorry? Politics <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, um, I'm a writer, that's something that stayed with me, um, but 
Um, I was on a different course. I was going to work at the UN and, you know, uh, bring world peace. And, uh, and then uh, I met Dr. Alexander Lowen, who is, uh, was an American psychotherapist, um, who, a, a, a pioneer in the field of body psychotherapy, really. I had the... Well, Umet. He passed away, uh, I think, 2010 at the age of 98. Uh, I met him uh, in 2000, 2001. I, w I, w I had the privilege of being his patient for about a year. He was 92 when I met him. Uh, he was still working, uh, still moving, still breathing. He was very much alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry? Ma? What did I miss? Well, um, so I met him uh, and he really, uh, the work with him helped me um, reconnect to my body. That's where it all started for me. Uh, I was 24. I realized uh, just how disconnected I was up to that point. And it through this work during that year that I, um, everything changed basically. And I realized that from working Outside, I want to work inside and I want to work with people um, directly. And that's what led me to uh, <coughs> read his 12 books and then uh, go study. Uh, not his specific approach, which is called bioenergetics, uh, but uh, like a stepbrother of this approach um, that is called biosynthesis. I studied this at uh, Broshim campus uh, of Tel Aviv University. And um, uh, it's it, in there's a, the umbrella of body psychotherapy and there are different modalities so this is one of them and just like in psychology you have Freud and Jung and existential and yeah so it's it's, it's very similar um, but again what I what connected uh, me to it or what helped me um, choose this instead of going to study psychology for instance classical or uh, uh, psychoanalysis or whatever it is, um, was the connection to the body, was the realization that it's not all in our heads, um, even though we think it is. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. I, I would love, before, if, if there are any questions, uh, you're welcome to ask. But before that, even, I'll ask if anybody want to share what was it like um, to do the breathing and grounding? Even in a word. Mm -hmm. I, I was so surprised how quickly that when you said feel your feet on the ground, how quick the change was for me. I, immediately I, I was centered. I felt the change in the energy in the room. And it was it was immediate. It, it took two seconds and I felt the difference. Right? That, was, that was really mind boggling. Wow. Thank you. Can you say a little bit about that change? Change from what to what? Calmer, mm -hmm. calmer, um, focused, um, and just within myself, not, not you know, like yeah. this, just this. And it, it was really, it was so quick, just feeling my feet. I mean, I do, I do breathing and stuff sometimes, but this was much stronger mm -hmm. for me. And not worrying about the breathing, just regular. Exactly. That made a big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, um, when you said read how you want to read or whatever, that's something that I've never heard from anyone who's directing your reading. You know, like, kind of, I never get the reading, but it's one of the few times I'm anxious to see the reading. <laughs> because you know, I was like, yeah, oh, you don't read right. Well, obviously, I just want to know. I'm going to have it a few of the times, but it was such a pleasure to just. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Any more experiences sharing? All right. Questions? Gamlo. Yes. Okay, okay, uh, no such thing, uh, because, yeah, because um, 
um, we're all different. Everybody is different and we all need different things at different times. And uh, with some patients I can talk for six months and uh, do very little body work. And with some patients we go right to the body work, uh, right away. Um, but there are commonalities obviously and I have my approach. Um, uh, that is also always um, in, um, in the Akshava, listening, uh, in tune to uh, whoever sits uh, in front of me, um, to their body, to their breathing, and um, that's something I notice, or I pay attention to a lot, what happens as you speak, yeah, as the people speak, what happens to their breathing, what happens to their body. <laughs> Uh, and bringing their attention to it. That's often uh, a big, big um, opener for them because often when we, we're in, in, in life and in the daily things and in whatever is happening, we, we, don't, we lose touch. We don't, pay, we don't notice that all of a sudden we start breathing um, more shallow. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, something contracts. Uh, un unless there's pain involved and then but we want to avoid that, yeah? We want to um, try to catch it before it becomes too, like the, when the body starts screaming, yeah? Um, so a typical session, I can just say, uh, I'll talk about um, first sessions, because that's usually more common, and then it, go, it spreads into wherever um, we feel is right. It's always a mutual um, understanding. Um, the first meeting is usually pretty simple. It's just introducing, yeah, getting to know a little bit. Um, and I would usually invite the person to, to pay attention to the breathing, um, invite questions. And every session I start with, where are you now? How did you arrive today? Um, yeah, because we have the stories and we have our lives and we have our experiences, which all have a place, yeah, and uh, I work with that as well, of course. But I always begin with, where are you today? Um, because that in itself uh, brings down the anxiety, because it brings you right back to right here and now. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm still breathing, everything, I'm talking to you right now, yeah? And so working with that has a lot of value, as opposed to staying in your head and thinking and overthinking and analyzing. Answered your question? Uh, yeah. Reich, Ken. Wilhelm Reich, um, the father of body psychotherapy, yeah, um, and an inspiration uh, uh, for me and for many people around the world. Um, I don't work uh, by Reichian uh, methods because that's not what I studied, but many or anyone who works in body psycho psychotherapy works in Reichian methods. Um, ideas, certain exercises, certain techniques. Um, the grounding is Lowens, the person I spoke uh, about before, who was the first psychotherapist to uh, uh, put people on their feet. Until then, including Reich, who worked only lying down or sitting. Um, uh, but definitely Reich is a big, he guides everything we do, I do. Uh, he's there. Um, but it's not Reichian therapy, which is uh, its own modality and its own. There's a specific uh, uh, that training that you go through for that. Yes, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Ken. Ken. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, how much um, volume, how much space do you give for the analysis for talking mm -hmm. as opposed to the body work? And the second question is what do you think of the healing? Theta healing. Yes. Okay, so the first question, um, uh, I would say equal. Equal time, in equal uh, intention, equal space for talk and analysis and the body work. Um, sometimes they're intertwined. Yeah, as I speak, uh, I would say, okay, just pay attention. What's going on right now in your body? 
Body work doesn't always have to be just exercise and moving. Yeah, it could just be very subtle and bringing the attention. So it's intertwined, and I would say about equal because um, even with someone we don't we we don't talk a lot. I would later write or anal analyze, yeah, or think about or go to supervision or whatever it takes. Yeah, so it's always part of the process, and for me. It's, we're equal, yeah, the, the mind and the body are, are one and the same, so it comes into, uh, into the clinic as well. And Theta Healing, I don't know enough, I know about it, uh, I don't work with it, I don't know it enough, so I can't say, uh, but I heard uh, it's some energy work, and I love energy, so if it, if it's, it feels right and it helps people, wonderful. Yeah, is and then you. <laughs> yeah. Is there any special exercise or technique that uh, you know that works when one feels anxiety growing up? When it comes up. <coughs> well, what we did is number one is very very effective. Uh, again, be, if the the mere reversing of the movement, yeah, bringing the head down. Does, uh, does something right away. Because if we stay up, we go up, yeah? The mind just starts racing and, and, and we, we stay above here, yeah? And then we lose touch of the contractions and the uh, yeah? Some people have to go to the bathroom and some people can't breathe and it's so, this really helps. Um, and I would say in general, uh, moving, really helps. Yeah, you get up, some people uh, go out for a walk, running. That, that helps in and of itself, uh, because if you sit down and you stay stuck in your place, the energy is stagnant and, the, and, the, and anxiety can flourish. Yeah, it just, because um, it feeds itself all the time. But sometimes it makes us like, you know, in an elevator, sitting in an airplane, right. sitting in a class. Yes. You, you can't do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah? Ah. No. So, I, mean, I, I understand what you mean. Um, Is there any there's, there's no, there's no, there's no magic, no magic that I know about. Okay. Uh, but like I said before, wherever the setting, if you take yourself out of the situation, even on an airplane, that happened to me once, I remember. There was a mechanical problem and I couldn't breathe. I'm like, shit. <laughs> what? So, yeah, so I went to the bathroom. Or I went, uh, I went to the bathroom, but then I realized there's a space at the end of the airplane. There's enough yeah. space. Yeah, exactly. And I just bent forward and started breathing. And focusing on the breathing, focusing on the breathing, without trying to change it. Um, really, really helps. Um, other than that, I can't think of magic tricks, but there are different exercises, really, that, um, that can help. Um, can you show us some more? Some more exercises. Uh, yes, I'll get to you in, uh, in one moment. Uh, one more exercise. Yeah, why not? Um, First, I'll just say, w the same exercise we did uh, bending forward, we can also do it uh, sitting down, okay? So if you can't uh, do it standing up, you just sit down and you bring your head down, yeah? And again, you, you, you make sure you don't sit cross-legged or anything like that, but you put your feet on the ground and you drop down, basically, and you just breathe. So that's, that's a good one. Another one that really takes it to the next level uh, yeah, let's just go with it. So uh, you, you start the same, but then you stay on one foot and you raise one leg up. <gasps> <sighs> you use your hands for balance. And that really, um, oh, it feels nice. <laughs> With that, and then you reverse leg, you, you reverse your legs. Um, it really it amplifies it basically, yeah, because it increases the tension on the leg, the force on the leg. 
All the weight should be on the foot. All the weight should be on the foot and not on the hands. But um, anyway, as that's another idea. There's the man, uh, Dr. Alexander Lowen, my mentor, let's say, um, he has a book with over 100 exercises for uh, not just anxiety, yeah, um, but in general for reconnecting to yourselves and just being vibrantly alive. <laughs> so that's the, the way it's called, uh, The Way to Vibrant Health. That's the name of the book. We have time for one more question. One more, so you are waiting patiently. brings out your energy and makes you do stuff and uh, makes you uh, alert to your uh, surroundings and the, uh, the anxiety. Uh, so I, I had periods of uh, fearlessness uh -huh. and I just couldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and that is also not good. And can you regulate this somehow? Because I experienced kind of the whole spectrum and I, it's difficult for me to find a the short answer is yes, uh, we're born regulated, basically, yeah, it's so restoring that is the, the, the idea. Uh, as I said, it's a natural um, process, anxiety, and so regulating it really takes um, the work, yeah, of reconnecting to your body. The, the line is usually uh, when it becomes debilitating or it interferes with um, doing something um, that you want to do. Uh, that's when you can notice, okay, something is wrong, yeah, this is too much, or I'm, I can't sleep well, I can't relax, when I, even when I have the time and opportunity and there's, there are, there's no threat. Um, so that's usually where the line is, but uh, what you described when you, you, you sensed uh, fearlessness, yeah, and you still couldn't do anything, that's just as scary to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, the banks of a river. Yeah, if, if there are no banks, we have a flood. If they're, if they're too narrow, you can't flow. So you want them just right. You need those boundaries there um, to guide you, to regulate, exactly, to regulate the flow of energy, of life, of breathing. So um, that's a little bit, I hope it answers. Okay, so uh, wait, I'll just say, <laughs> I'll just say uh, thank you very much על זה שזרמתם ואני אאחל לכם חיבור עצמי נעים ומיטיב ותודה רבה